Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're currently going through Psalm 37, and we come today to Psalm 37, verse 20. You can study all of God's Word with me, just like we're going to do today, verse by verse, one verse at a time, through the Bible, at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, that's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There you will find four complete series. This is the fifth, by the way. The New Testament is already done. <clears throat> and uh, we're through the Old Testament up until where we are today, Psalm 37. So there are four complete, going on five, all their archive going back 37 years. All you have to do is choose which series, which book of the Bible, which section, which chapter. Click and listen. Bring your Bible and a hunger for God's Word, and you are all set at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. <clears throat> verse twenty. Psalm 37, where God says, The wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be the fat of lambs. They shall consume. Into smoke shall they consume away. So God compares the wicked to the fat of lambs. In other words, the wicked may look like they are flourishing, but they will soon be dry and lifeless, and it's not going to go on forever. 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. <clears throat> A bad person borrows and doesn't return it, which is stealing. Meanwhile, the righteous gives what he never borrowed in the first place. So the righteous not only do not keep what belongs to somebody else, they give what belongs to them. 22. For such as are blessed by him shall inherit the earth, and they who are cursed by him shall be cut off. So those who are cursed by God will be cut off. In other words, the one that refuses to repent, receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, out of fellowship with God in rebellion against God, according to the scripture, an enemy of God, they are the ones who are cursed. They remain under the curse of sin because they don't take the way out that God has provided through his son, Jesus Christ. Those who are cursed by God will be cut off. The one that God curses will be cut off, will be separated from God. God doesn't curse anyone for any reason, by the way, other than sin. The Bible says that the curse of sin is death. If you go through life sinning, you never repent, you never receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the forgiveness that goes with that, then you will endure the curse of sin. Not just physical death, but spiritual death, which is cut off from God, eternal death, which means to be eternally cut off from God in the lake of fire, burning and horrible torment, pain for your sin forever and ever. That's the curse of sin. That's a high price to pay for the temporary pleasures that sin may give you. 23, <clears throat> the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. People have a free will, so they can do whatever they want to do, and they are responsible for what they do. But God's sovereignty still works behind the scenes, which means that in the end, 
God uses bad choices and good choices, both to work together to bring about his big plan. That doesn't eliminate man's free will. Somehow, some way, it works in conjunction with God's sovereignty. And I can't explain it. Nobody else can. But both need to be taught because both are taught in Scripture. We'll let God figure it out. And if he wants to tell us someday how he can reconcile the free will of man and his sovereignty, if he wants to tell us, he, he can. If not, well, too bad. We'll just have to trust him because he's a lot smarter than we are. So let's read 23 and 24 together. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Now a good person may fall. They may even get knocked down, spiritually speaking. But they're not going to stay down if they know the Lord. God pulls his people up, keeps them going. Setbacks do not destroy God's people. 25. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Don't take this as a promise because it's not a promise. Don't, don't, don't think that if you live for Jesus that you will never lack food or a roof over your head and that this is a promise that you will never lack. Don't take that as a promise because it's not a promise. It's what this writer had observed in his life. But that doesn't mean it's a promise. Don't put words in God's mouth. Because Paul, the Apostle Paul, who was probably the most faithful Christian to ever live in my mind, Sometimes went without food, sometimes went without water, sometimes went without a roof over his head. There were many, many nights he spent freezing, and other times hot. That's not a promise for godly people. God never promises godly people, Christians, happiness in this life. So don't take this as a promise, because it's not. Some people take this verse, which is poetry, and like a parable, it's a general truth, and they turn it into a promise. They put words in God's mouth. The fact is, sometimes godly people go hungry. And again, I said, the Apostle Paul knew what it was like to be hungry, thirsty, cold, hot. This verse simply means that God does not forsake those who love him, even though it may seem like he does, judging from their outward circumstances, but he does not. And in the end, they will certainly be taken care of. 26. You say, well, that's not good enough. Well, then you're not living by faith. Your focus is on the world and instead of eternity, and you better check to see if you're saved. Because you're either not saved or you are a worldly, worldly Christian who's in for a rough time until you wake up and grow up. 26. Let's read 25 and 26 together. I have been young and now am old, yet I have, never, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Well, now David himself was on the run from Saul for was it four or five years, living in caves, living out in the wilderness? He didn't exactly have it good. So again, don't take this as a promise. It's a general truth. Verse 26, he is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. The children, And this is a general truth. The children of godly people more often than not are a blessing. And that's what this is talking about. The children of godly people, more often than not, are a blessing because they have been raised right. The children of the wicked are oftentimes miserable to be around, just like their parents. They're disrespectful and a nuisance, just like their parents. 
27. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. People who do not do good will experience evil. And that's the reason why God says, depart from evil. Turn your back on evil. Walk away from it. Don't compromise with it. Just get rid of it and start doing good. That's repentance, by the way. 28. For the Lord loveth justice and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. God will never leave his saints because God never leaves his people. Now, you may want to be around some people and they don't want to be around you. Maybe you've experienced that. But God never says no to someone who wants to be with him. And he talks about the seed of the wicked here. The seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Refers to people who love wickedness. So they are the seed of the wicked and they will be cut off. In other words, they will perish. People who love wickedness don't have eternal life in them. It's not that saved people never do anything wrong. It's just that saved people don't turn their back on God and live in constant rebellion against God. In other words, they don't love wickedness. Saved people are upright in heart, meaning even though they don't always do what is right, they don't always do what they deep down want to do, which is to please the Lord. They sometimes, they sometimes sin against God, but they don't love it. They hate it. And they confess and they repent. They don't, they don't have the idea that, well, it's no big deal. I'll just keep doing it. 29. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. When the Israelites were righteous, talking about Old Testament, God's Old Testament people, by the way, the Israelites were God's Old Testament people. They were his earthly people. The church is God's heavenly people. In that the Israelites, when they were righteous, were promised the promised land. And they were promised that if they lived for God, they would be able to remain in the promised land and God would bless them with bumper crops and all sorts of wonderful things and keep them safe from their enemies. And he did. You can read about that in the Old Testament, study about it. It's exactly what God did. They would receive their earthly reward, including being able to stay in the promised land and be blessed if they remained faithful to God. Now, the principle is the same, but the land for us Christians would refer to our inheritance in Christ, which would include, are you ready for this? Our raised body new earth and our new raised physical bodies no sickness no death no sorrow good times forever in the perfect environment the righteous will enjoy paradise forever which is what he is saying right here god blesses his people we'll stop right there for today you can study all of god's word with me at the scripture verse by verse website and that's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, you can be, by praying for me and God's Word, because the second you do that, you become a part of Scripture verse by verse. And I'd appreciate your prayers more than what I can say. Also, when you take a break from studying with me, which I hope you do at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you for studying with me. So long, everyone.